Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Brendan O'Keefe, and I'm going to be the host for today's webinar. I've got Dr. Anthony Crafasi on the line with me. I'm going to pass it off to him in a moment. I just want to repeat, we're really excited to have you all today. Here today, we're going to be talking about GI Map Lab Interpretation 101. Um, but before we get into that, I would like to just go through a few housekeeping items. Um, first, I've muted everyone by default. Um, so as, as everyone come in, you should be muted. If everyone can stay muted during the course of the presentation, that would be amazing, just to make sure that we don't have any disruptions during the presentation. In addition, um, all of the um, questions are gonna come to me as the host. So Anthony will be giving the presentation momentarily, but I'm gonna be receiving all questions and all comments. So if you have any questions during the course of the webinar, please feel free to submit them in the chat window. We'll prioritize those and get to as many as we possibly can at the end of the webinar. If we can't get to your question, we'll have a recording of it and try to get back to you with an answer. Um, if there are, let's, I don't think there's any more housekeeping items. So with that, let's dive in right into the presentation. Dr. Anthony, please take it away. Beautiful, thank you so much, Brendan. Hello to everybody who's joining us this evening and today. And thank you so much to Rupa Health and Zymogen for hosting this webinar. So today we're gonna to be covering the GI map from Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory. And we're gonna be going over a lab interpretation 101, just a big overview, 50,000 foot view of what the GI map is and how you can utilize it in your practice. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we will also get with you after. So let's start about what we're going to be going over. So today we're gonna to first cover some of the highlights here and that is what is the GI map, the benefits of the GI map, general interpretation and overview of what it looks at, some pathogens that are on the GI map, H. pylori and virulence factors, normal, commensal, and opportunistic bacteria, fungi, yeast, viruses, and parasites that are found on the GI map, some amazing intestinal health markers, and finally, uh, a protocol for a common condition. And just a reminder, this is an overview and a guide. So interpretation and treatment can vary from patient to patient, which is based upon your own practitioner's clinical decision-making. So this presentation is not to be interpreted as med medical advice or creating a doctor or patient relationship either. So before we begin, uh, again, thank you so much to Rupa Health. This webinar is hosted by Rupa Health and Rupa Health is the best way to order functional and integrative lab tests from over 20 plus specialty labs, reducing your time spent ordering labs by 90% and helping you provide a superior patient experience. And ordering through Rupert is as simple as making an account, starting a new patient order, choosing a test, and you are done in under 60 to 90 seconds. And again, they have all of your favorite and best functional medicine laboratory tests all in one place. Super, super amazing. It's also hosted by Zymogen. And Zymogen is a nutraceutical company and is an exclusive nutraceutical brand. It's quite literally the most protected brand in the United States. Since Zymogen was founded in 2003, the goal was to create an exclusive practitioner formulas. And with the te technology of track and trace using the e-pedigree verification, that is a reality today. What this means for your patient is that you get the true, authentic, potent, and fresh formulas to ensure the best results and outcomes for your patients. And it means when your patients need more, they can simply, they cannot simply go to Amazon or other big retail sites to get their formulas. They must go through you. So you can now order Zymogen straight through whole scripts. And it's very easy to set up an account, start a new patient order, choose your products, and you are done. They also have some really amazing features, including templates, med packs, which are specific packets for your own patients and private label among others. So thank you again to both Rupa Health and Zymogen. Just a little disclaimer before we begin as well, the following information, information that follows represents Zymogen's choice for presentation of studies, comments, and opinions. The statements have not been evaluated by the FDA and the products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. It's assumed that the practitioner will investigate the topic further and not use this presentation as a sole source of information. 
from which to derive an individualized patient protocol. This case study represents the results of one participant and the reader should weigh these results with other scientific data and should not expect the same results as those found in this case study alone. The effects observed do not reflect those typically associated with this treatment model. All right, let's begin. So why the GI map? Let's start. So the GI map, also known as the gastrointestinal microbial assay plus is an innovative clinical tool that measures gastrointestinal microbiota DNA from a single stool sample with the state of the art quantitative polymerase chain reaction, which we will call PCR or qPCR technology. And as a side note, if you're interested in learning more about PCR, I recommend after this webinar, go take a look at how PCR was invented and the story behind it, because it's very fascinating. So the GI map was des designed to detect microbes that may be disturbing normal microbial balance or contributing to illness as well as indicators of digestion, absorption, inflammation, and immune function. And we're gonna be discussing this point a little bit further going forth as the standard or traditional stool tests that some patients may receive will not dive deep as the GI map in terms of looking at normal microbial balance and the disturbances. So if you are a practitioner watching this tonight, you may have experienced the following case timeline. You have a patient who's suffering with symptoms. They have no resolutions or answers to their healthcare problems and they're scratching their head wondering what's going on. The patient may complete a GI map and you may help them complete that. And now you and the patient both have answers and a guide going forth. This is a very common uh, system and um, situation here that occurs with functional medicine practitioners. And the GI map can provide you so much really good actionable information that you can give to your patient as well as for yourself to help guide your patient to treatments and to a state of health. So let's go over some benefits of the GI map. So when should you order the GI map? Well, there's a number of reasons and times you can order the GI map, including if you want to just get annual lab work. We know that from a functional medicine standpoint, it's great to be checking on patients from a three month, 12 month, or even six month standpoint. So the GI map is great to get used as annual lab work and just to make sure that your patients are staying in optimal health. Another great reason you could order the GI map is if you're suspecting an underlying condition. Maybe the patient presents to you with signs and symptoms that you want to dig a little bit deeper and know more about. Or maybe the patient has had a previous GI map with another practitioner or you have ordered a previous GI map or you're suspecting a diagnosis and you want to confirm that the diagnosis the GI map can give you some actionable results there. So what are some conditions that warrant testing? Well, there's a number of different conditions nowadays that we could cover, but for the sake of this webinar, we're just gonna give a brief overview. But some of them include things like autoimmune disease, brain fog, and mood disorders, including anxiety and depression. We all are, I'm sure, aware of the brain-gut and gut-brain connection that we could talk about for hours. And so, the GI map can give you a lot of insight into things that are going on in the brain. It is also great for things like irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease, including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, along with things like digestive complaints, including diarrhea and constipation, along with weight loss issues. Furthermore, it can help you guide uh, information onto things like diabetes, as well as skin problems like acne and psoriasis. Again, the GI map can give you so many different answers for so many different complaints and symptoms, as we know that the body is made up of compartments, but each compartment works together. So they all influence each other. So let's dive into the general interpretation and overview of the GI map. So the GI map quantifies bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites using the qPCR technology. And as I mentioned, this is a leap forward from older methodologies that report only a positive and a negative, which is found on a standard ONP or an OVA and parasite test that I'll go over in just a moment. Results are reported as colony forming units per gram of stool, meaning that one colony forming unit is roughly equivalent to one 
microorganism or one cell, which is amazing. So furthermore, results are also expressed in science, standard scientific notation. So a reported result of 3.5 e to the seventh, e meaning 10 to the seventh power is actually equivalent to 35 million colony forming units per gram of stool. So this is a standard ova and parasite result that you can see here. And with this test, again, you only get a positive or negative result with these tests. Now, in contrast with the GI map that I'll go over in just a second in terms of the results, you can see here that all you get is a, a, a normal or an abnormal. And as you can see under the result one line, it just says many or moderately seen. It does not tell you a number, it does not tell you a limit, and it just tells you again a positive or negative. Furthermore, these tests are very uh, limited and dismal in comparison to the GI map in, in, um, in regards to the amount of markers that are looked at and the overall usage of the test. You might be asking yourself, that's all you get with the oven parasite. And yes, that is all you get. And so you might be scratching your head, but that's where we have great news that the GI map can offer you much, much more. And again, you can order the GI map through Rupa Health along with many, many other tests um, as you see fit. So let's go over a little bit more details about what the GI map will give you in terms of the results. So as you can see on the top, this is a sample of bacterial pathogens that are checked on the GI map, including Campylobacter and C. difficile, including toxin A. And for Campylobacter, you can see that not only will you get potentially a positive or negative or a high or abnormal limit, you'll also get what's called a detected limit, which is indicated by the lesser DL uh, acronym abbreviation there. So that means detection limit. This means that even if you have a infection or a bug that is not in its extreme level of infection state, you might have just a detected amount that could become a problem or maybe it was a problem, but at least it's able to give you an idea that it is present there and the test was able to identify it. So let's jump down to reference ranges. And again, we know that reference ranges are, can vary from lab to lab. And so the reference ranges for the pathogens for the GI map were developed using known positive disease samples so that we are getting actually reference ranges based off an unhealthy population, not a healthy population, to construct cutoff values that distinguish disease-causing amounts of pathogenic and opportunistic microbes. So the reference ranges for the pathogens were then correlated with an FDA-cleared assay for GI pathogens. And the GI map is capable of detecting a pathogen as low as 0.1 cell per gram of stool. That is pretty cool. So what's included in the results? Let's go over a number of these, including the pathogens, H. pylori and virulence factors, the normal and commensal bacteria, the opportunistic bacteria, fungi and yeast, viruses, parasites, intestinal health markers, and as well as antibiotic resistant genes. So let's begin with pathogens. So the GI map includes pathogens, including bacterial, parasitic, and viral, which are commonly known to cause acute illnesses, including things like gastroenteritis, stomach flu, and food poisoning, which we'll go over. Now, just a reminder, not all individuals with positive findings for, for pathogens will present with symptoms. So we know that some of your patients that may have positive results may not have findings, and some of your patients with non-positive results may have also clinical findings. So we have to always take this on a case-by-case -case basis. Some of the factors that symptomatic individuals may have, and you must take into account, again, are health of an individual, the transient nature of some pathogens, meaning some pathogens may go into hiding and then resurface and vice versa, as well as the prevalence, the presence and expression of virulence factors, which we'll talk about as well. And another reminder is that toxins are a type of virulence factor that are produced by certain pathogens. So since the GI map is a DNA-based test, results reflect the levels of pathogenic strains carrying the toxin genes, not necessarily the levels of any toxins that may be produced. This is a really important point. So the GI map does not measure toxins directly for any microbe. So 
For example, if you have a patient that has an infection, maybe from a gram negative infection of bacteria and they are releasing toxins or you would like to eradicate that infection. And so you go in and start stimulating the body to eradicate that infection and that bacteria starts releasing a lot of toxins. This GI map is not able to detect the level of toxins that are being released, just the level of pathogenic strains carrying the toxin genes. So as I mentioned, these are some of the pathogens tested and most of these pathogens are related to acute type illnesses, as I mentioned. So things like gastroenteritis, stomach flu, um, food poisoning, among other things. So acute type illnesses. And there's so many different bugs on the test that again, we're just going over a basic overview today, but they include all bacterial, parasitic and viral here as well. Now, some additional benefits that you get from the GI map, which is really, really nice to have are three main important points here. And that is one, the epidemiology of each bug. So the prevalence of the bug, as well as clinical implications. So what should you, um, what type of symptoms are related to the bug, as well as any therapeutic approaches and considerations. So let's go over an example of one of those. And that is the example Campylobacter, which is a pathogen. So as you can see, this is, will be the same for every single bug on the GI map test. You'll get epidemiology, clinical implications, and therapeutic approaches and considerations. So for the epidemiology, you'll see that Campylobacter is one of the most common causes of foodborne illness in the United States. Again, an acute borne illness. It is common with fecal contamination of poultry and water. And some clinical implications is that this may be infection, infectious at even very low exposures. And symptoms can range from mild to severe abdominal pain, diarrhea, fever, malaise, lasting several days to several weeks. And some therapeutic approaches. Uh, therapeutic approaches and considerations. So we know that after you get this, if this is present, you may want to check the patient's calprotectin levels, which we'll look at, which is a great marker for overall gastrointestinal inflammation. You might want to consider some high dose probiotics or a broad spectrum antimicrobial and maybe a five hour protocol, which we know is remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance for the body and the GI tract. And you might even want to look at some other things like azithromycin or fluoroquinolones for heavy infections with Campylobacter. So again, this is a really nice feature of the GI map that you get with all the bugs tested. So let's talk a little bit about H. pylori and the virulence factors. So I'm gonna use H. pylori as an example for virulence factors today, but a lot of bugs on the GI map test have virulence factors. Now, Virulence factors are what make the bug essentially dangerous to your body. So for example, we know that H. pylori is present in about 50% of the population, but only about say 15% of so of people actually exhibit uh, negative symptoms of H. pylori. <laughs> this is that H. pylori can exist in conjunction with other bugs, but not be causing negative reactions in the body. This also means that the body that when we're testing for H. pylori on the GI map, somebody may have the virulence factors and they may not have the virulence factors acting as a negative influencer into the body. So the virulence factors is really what makes the, the type of bug, it makes it a threat then to your body. So some of these virulence factors can include things like blood group, antigen binding, and hesin, which can, which can induce inflammation and more. So you can see these are a list of these. So this again is just uh, an overview of virulence factors and H. pylori as a whole, but we can apply this to a number of other bugs on the GI map as well. All right, let's go over some normal commensal and opportunistic bacteria as well. So we know that there is a number, there's only about six phyla in the GI tract or the gut microbiota and phyla is the highest um, level in the kingdom of bugs. So this is the overall arching um, uh, um, hierarchy in the kingdom of bugs would be phyla. And there's only about six. And so on this list, the most common ones are going to be the bacteroidetes and the firmicutes. And so we're going to touch on those today. So 
We know that bacteroidetes are mostly gram negative and the firmicutes are gram positive. And these are the bacteria phyla, again, that dominate the digestive tract, making up about what they say 90% of the entire digestive tract. So when you get an abnormal ratio in one of these phyla, this, this can suggest something like dysbiosis, which is a pretty general term, meaning a, an imbalance in microbiota in the GI tract. And it's been said that if you have a high firmicute, and it's been shown in the literature as well, a high firmicute to bacteria ratio can suggest not, not only microbial imbalance, but also can lead to things like and be related to obesity. Whereas a low firmicute to bacteroidetes ratio can be related to things like inflammatory bowel disease. As well as, again, if you have a low ratio, it can suggest further things such as caloric extraction, increased caloric extraction from food, fat deposition, lipogenesis, and more. There's also a number of studies, approximately over 100 on, say, PubMed, relating the overall GI tract and the gut microbiota to obesity. So we know that these bugs can play a major role in our overall health, immunity, and more. So some opportunistic bacteria on the GI map. When we discuss opportunistic bacteria, you can think of these that they see the opportunity if the patient is not in a good state of health. So many bacteria measured on the GI map are considered opportunistic. They only cause disease and illness in some individuals, usually if they are not in a good state of health. So many individuals come into contact with opportunistic bacteria and experience no symptoms as well. However, most sources consider these microbes to be normal in the stool as we discussed on the standard ova and parasite test. However, they can cause things like gastroenteritis and inflammation at high levels in vulnerable patients. <clears throat> so these are some of the opportunistic bacteria that are also tested in the GI map. And again, there's so many that we're just giving a brief overview today on what we're looking at here. So another great feature though that we have is the autoimmune association with the opportunistic bacteria that is shown on the GI map. So with the GI map, you will get the opportunistic bacteria and then any autoimmune associations related such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, Crohn's and more. And many of these bugs thrive in these inflammatory conditions. And we know that not only can these bugs be found in the GI tract, they can be found elsewhere in the body. So the GI map is always a great place to start to see if these are also harboring in the GI tract. So this is another great feature of the GI map. All right, let's go over fungi, yeast, viruses, and parasites next. So as you can see here, we have a list of different fungi, yeast, viruses, parasites, and worms. And there's so many, so I'm just gonna pick the first one to, as an example, which is Candida, which is commonly found in patients. And this bug in particular is related a lot to dysbiosis. So when we look at the overall gut microbiome, we'll often find that Candida can be elevated in contrast with these. And again, these all can be influencing each other. So if you have low status of good microbiota and good bacteria, Candida can rise and vice versa. All right, and finally, let's talk about some intestinal health markers. And there's a couple really great ones here. The first ones are digestion. So we're looking at pancreatic elastase one and steatocrit to start. So pancreatic elastase one <clears throat> is a digestive enzyme that's secreted exclusively by the pancreas, which gives an indirect indication of pancreatic function, whereas Steatocrit is associated with bile salts and fecal fats. So for example, if you have a patient that has poor, um, that maybe has an infection such as H. pylori that we went over, which as we mentioned, can be commonly associated with things like gastric and, and duodenal ulcers, as well as just gastritis and low stomach acid, you may have an infection of that and a downstream effect is that you may have low stomach acid. If you have low stomach acid or a patient with hypochlorhydria, you may have as a downstream effect 
abnormal levels of pancreatic elastase 1 and steatocrit. So these are some markers that you might want to look at in conjunction with that that can give you an insight into the upstream effects as to what's going on in the body. So these are some great digestive markers. Some additional markers of digestive health include things like beta glucuronidase. So high levels of, beta, high levels of fecal beta glucuronidase can indicate unfavorable metabolic changes in the colon. We know that glucuronidase is associated with conjugation and all the aspects of phase two detoxification in the detox processes in the body. So looking at an elevated or an abnormal amount of this can indicate dysbiosis and interference with detoxif detoxification regarding the glucuronidation process. Another marker is the occult blood fecal immunochemical test. This is known as the FIT test. Now, normally people test, test for, and in standard stool tests, you'll test for just an occult blood fecal test, which looks at essentially the blood that is not naked to the, the eye. Okay, so the FIT test is a little different as it is quantitative and directly measures the actual concentration of hemoglobin present in the stool rather than just the qualitative presence of hemoglobin with a standard occult fecal blood test. So this test uses antibodies that are specific for human hemoglobin, therefore doesn't require any dietary restrictions or multiple samples, which also significantly reduces the appearance of false positives. So this method, again, it has better detection of lower hemoglobin concentrations than qualitative tests, which eliminates the false negatives as well. So again, another really nice feature of the GI map, just even more specific. So some additional markers go over the immune response, which include things like secretory IgA and antigliadin secretory IgA. So we know that immunoglobin A is present in a number of in, in the majority and all of the mucous membranes, and it's the primary immunoglobulin in the intestinal mucosa. So this represents the first line of defense in response to antigens and pathogens in the GI and respiratory tracts, as again, you find this in all the different mucous membranes. Whereas anti-gliadin secretory IgA or SIGA, we know that gliadin is a component of gluten and gluten is one of the proteins that's found in wheat and other grains, such as barley, rye, and malt. And so the presence of this anti-gliadin antibodies can indicate an immune response in the gut in response to gluten in the diet. Again, you can have different responses in the body to different types of environmental exposures, food sensitivities, and more. So this is just another way that you can check for these things inside of the gut, which is really nice to have. Some other markers include things like calprotectin. Calprotectin is the primary marker that we're going to be looking at that differentiates your IBS versus your IBD. So fecal calprotectin is the most studied marker of GI inflammation. High calprotectin indicates neutrophil or white blood cell infiltration into the gut mucosa. And again, it's the gold standard marker for the diagnosis and monitoring of inflammatory bowel disease and it's used to differentiate between IBS and IBD. So at lower levels, calprotectin will be present and it can more be more indicative of IBS. And as soon as, and when calprotectin begins to become more elevated, it begins to get into that IBD range. And those markers can be seen on the GI map in specific um, reference ranges. And then finally, zonulin. We know that zonulin is a protein found in the gut that can help stabilize the gut and is associated with intestinal hyperpermeability or leaky gut. And so gliadin is a compound, a component of gluten, gluten, which as we just went over is a protein found in wheat. And so the presence of these antibodies can indicate an immune response in the glut, in the gut, which can essentially lead to zonulin becoming open more often than it is necessary and is supposed to leading to more hyperpermeability, malabsorption, and more. All right, so just a quick disclaimer, the information that follows represents Zymogen's choices for presentations of studies, comments, and or opinions. The statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. The products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And it's assumed that the practitioner will investigate the topic further and not use this presentation as a sole source of information from which to derive an individualized patient protocol. Furthermore, 
We have completed our scientific discussion in which we have considered medical conditions such as bacterial infections and immune imbalances. We will now turn attention to a dietary supplements. It's important to remember that dietary supplements cannot mitigate diseases or replace drugs. However, Zymogen products can give your patients their best chance to stay healthier longer. So let's go over a common protocol or a protocol for a common condition seen in a functional medicine practice, which would be in, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So a common process is that your patient may come to you with irritable bowel syndrome type of symptoms, including maybe constipation, diarrhea, and more as it's a syndrome. And you can have many, many different types of symptoms and signs. And so you might start off by performing a GI map to get an understanding of what is going on in the digestive tract and possibly even more, maybe a food sensitivity along with some other markers, maybe zonulin, a DEO or LPS test, which again, you can find all at Rupa Health. The next step is you may advise your patient of some therapy consisting of some maybe diet changes, including eliminating sugar, refined carbohydrates, and even caffeine. And finally, you might prescribe things like nutraceuticals, which we're about to go over here, including things like probiotics, immunoglobulins, glutamine, demulcents, prebiotics or fiber, pancreatic enzymes, and even maybe multivitamins. So here are some great supplements that we're about to go over in nutraceuticals that Zymogen offers that you can find with Zymogen. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Zymogen and we will have the information at the end of the webinar here. And so something you might, <clears throat> excuse me, might start off with is glutalamine. Now, glutalamine includes things like glutamine, which is the major fuel source for the enterocytes or the gut cells, as well as some demulcents, which can help to soothe the GI lining, which include things like DGL licorice or deglycerinated licorice, as well as aloe vera. This is a great product that can you, you can utilize as well in your practice. And please note as well that for all of Zymogen supplements, you will get not only standardized formats, there are also some proprietary blends that are formulated for and specific to Zymogen, but they were also um, obviously a very high quality and um, help your patients. Let's go on to the next product, which would be that you might use immunoglobulins that can decrease reactivity in the gut, specifically the product IG26DF. This product contains IGY Max hyper immunized egg powder. Zymogen is known for some amazing partnerships with large biotechs all over the world. And so these are some amazing new technologies that come out that can help your patients decrease reactivity in the gut. Another product that you might use is probiotics, which are commonly given to patients. And this is part of, again, a 5R or even 6R protocol that you might use, including re um, removing the irritant, replacing with nutrients, good bacteria and more, re-inoculating with good bacteria, excuse me, repairing the GI lining with some demulcents that we just went over and even rebalancing with some general strategies, which we just covered as well. But what I want you to focus on in this slide is how comprehensive this probiotic is. You're getting over about 350 billion probiotics for this um, county forming units for this uh, probiotic in particular. And if you'll see that this probiotic in particular <clears throat> and all of Zymogen probiotics don't just include the genus and species, it also includes the highly researched and studied strains. So you'll see at the first list, it says Lactobacillus acidophilus LA14. If your patient goes to the store and buys just general Lactobacillus acidophilus, they may be getting that bacteria, but they may not be getting the specific strain that is well-researched to have specific actions and potential and beneficial effects on the body. So it is the strain that you really want to be adding and giving to your patients. And all of these strains that we have on this probiotic and that Zymogen has as a whole are very well-researched and very well-studied. Moving on to digestive enzymes. The digestive enzyme that we have here is what's known as a full spectrum enzyme that covers all of your breakdown of your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, your fibers. So it includes things like your proteases, your amylases, cellulase, lactase, and more and more. So you can choose to use, idolize, utilize this type of full spectrum digestive enzyme, 
or you may choose to give your patient a more specific type of enzyme that is geared to more proteases such as betaine hydrochloric acid or something along those lines. So another great product that you can give to your patients. Going down the list, we go to fiber, which are known as prebiotics. And these are food for your probiotics. So these fuel your good bacteria in the gut. And some of these great product, uh, ingredients here include things like trifala extract and cape aloe, which have been shown to be very, very beneficial for your probiotics. And finally, touching on a multivitamin. We know that many patients not only don't have a great lifestyle, they may not be eating right. And in addition to chronic health conditions and comorbidities, they may be really starving themselves of nutrients and their bodies are craving nutrients. So having a multivitamin is a great way to fill in the gaps and compensate for any decreased absorption or malabsorption going on. And as you can see here, we have all active nutrients of these different types of vitamins and we have good uh, quality here as well. So we always wanna look at the types of nutrients and the quality that you're getting with your multivitamin. For example, we'll look at vitamin A and we know that beta carotene is the more water soluble form or retinol palmitate would be the fat soluble form. So it's nice to have a good balance so that we raise vitamin A status accordingly. All right, so again, thank you so much for attending this webinar today. I know this was a very big, brief overview of the GI map, but thank you again so much to Rupa Health for hosting this webinar. And again, it's easy, so easy to order on Rupa Health. You go on, you make an account, you start a new patient order, you choose your test, and you are done in under about 90 seconds. So Rupa Health is an amazing uh, service to your functional medicine practice. And ordering through Zymogen through Whole Scripts has never been easier. Again, you just go on, make an account, start a new patient order, choose your products, and you are done. And if you'd like to talk to customer service, please just call the phone number listed below. So these are all of the brands that are currently carried by Whole Scripts, which includes over 80 plus brands now. As you can see here, there's a number of, of different amazing brands that you can utilize in your functional medicine practice. So thank you again so much to Rupa Health and Zymogen and Whole Scripts for hosting this webinar. And I think we're gonna open it up now for some Q&A. Thank you, Anthony, Dr. Anthony Kravasi, everybody. Um, great presentation, really looking forward to jumping into some Q&A. Um, before I do that, I just wanna mention, I've gotten a lot of requests from people about, is there gonna be access to a recording? Are we going to get uh, access to a presentation, to the, to the copy of the presentation? Yes and yes. Uh, we will make sure that the recording is available to you and we will make sure that um, we will also send out the presentation itself. Um, we'll be reaching out to you either directly uh, from, from, from a Rupa Health account or directly through one of our, for our onboarding managers. Um, so look forward to that. Just want to make sure that that's all clear. Um, <clears throat> secondly, before we jump into some specific questions, I think Anthony, if we could maybe talk about where, just give a plug for kind of where um, pricing and or access to some of the Zymogen products can be found? Where would the best place for the people to go? Yeah, absolutely. I know that you can just um, uh, make a, an account on Zymogen and you will be able to have access to all the pricing from Zymogen as well as in the back end on Whole Scripts and look at not only Zymogen, but all of the other brands that were just shown, including more. So you'll have access to the pricing, pricing for your patients, templates, and much, much more in that uh, arena. Great. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. And we're going to go through maybe like four questions right now, but then I know we're probably not going to be able to get to everything. So we will uh, do our best. I'm taking notes on everybody's questions right now, um, along with the name. And um, to the best of our ability, we will definitely try to answer that question for you uh, via email afterwards. But let's dive into like four questions right now from the group doctor, if that's okay. Uh, let's jump into, so is the GI map a one day or three day test? I know the one day tests are not as good with detecting parasites. What do you think? That's a great question. And um, I know there's some debate about it, but with the GI map in particular, um, it's, it's my understanding as well that Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory who provides the GI map, because they are using the quantitative PCR methodology that is able to actually detect 
DNA uh, parasite fragments, which is much more specific than just the intact parasites that you would be looking at, say, on, say, a, a standard three-day test, for example. So according to Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory, and as far as I know, the one uh, day test is sufficient enough to check and uh, detect parasites. Thank you for that. Let's dive into one uh, another question here. Um, because so many different results show up on any given test, how will I know which protocols for supplements to potentially use? That's a great question as well. Um, you know, it can be difficult to know which protocols to use because of, of all the different results that can show up. Um, Zymogen can also provide you with a number of different protocols for different conditions um, from anything to IBS, IBD, um, gallbladder issues, and more. So there's a number of different protocols um, and steps that you can follow that Zymogen can also provide you with um, in regards to nutraceuticals and helping your patients. Okay, cool. Let's dive into another one. So I think we answered this before. I think you touched on it, but um, I know we talked about Rupa Health a couple of times. Can you tell us if you can order the GI map lab test through Rupa Health? Yes, you can order the GI map test through Rupa Health, um, through Diagnostic Solutions. Uh, Rupa Health does have that. If you want to order more GI tests as well, Rupa Health has a number of different tests that you can order, a very large catalog that you can order all of the tests in one fell swoop, uh, as we've shown very, very quickly um, from multiple specialty lab companies and have them shipped directly to your patient. And Rupa Health takes care of all of the back end work for you. So all you have to do is order and sit back and let your patients uh, do the testing. So it's very, very nice to have, which saves you a lot of time and hassle. All right, let's do one more question before we close this out. And again, I want some, there's just so many questions that have come in and I'm taking note of all of them. I want to make sure we get back to as many people as possible, but let's do one more question. Um, is the GI map covered by insurance? So as far as I know, the GI map is from Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory. Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory is not contracted with any network um, any commercial insurance plan. So anything that you would submit would be out of network, um, so to speak. So not necessarily um, covered by insurance that way. However, I know that through Rupa Health, you can um, order the GI map and Rupa Health does have options for financing for your patient, as well as can run it through patients, things like um, HSA, FSA, and more, um, as well as I know they have payment plans. So um, including three months interest free payment plans and things like that. So as far as the Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory in particular, though, no, I don't believe that they take um, or you can run it through insurance from them. Okay, great. Okay, so I just see one more, just one more quick question that I can answer is that can any type of practitioner sign up for Ruth Rupa Health? Yes, we support many different types of practitioners. Um, and yes, we, we, any type of practitioner can sign up for Rupa Health. Um, there will be more information on rupahealth.com about how we support that. Um, but with that, I'd like to conclude the webinar today and really thank Dr. Anthony Crafasi for his time. Um, I think this is a great presentation. Again, we'll follow up with the presentation itself along with a recording of the presentation so that you can reference it in the future. Um, I've taken uh, I've taken down all the questions and we will try to get back to you uh, personally with a response to, to your questions. But in the meantime, thank you again for your attendance. Thank you again, Dr. Anthony Crafasi, for an excellent presentation and have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.